I think that we are taking on a lot more stress in our lives and not delegating out because we think that we should be able to do everything. Welcome to another inspiring episode of the Good Enough Mompreneur Podcast, the show that celebrates the incredible women who are doing it all, juggling business and motherhood. I am your host, Angela Mishuli, and today we have a remarkable guest joining us, Lori Aikman. She's a nurse practitioner turned functional health practitioner dedicated to helping high achieving women and moms transform their lives. In this episode, we'll get a glimpse into Lori's own experience with burnout as a fellow high achieving mompreneur. We're gonna explore the differences between traditional family physicians and functional health practitioners and discover the profound impact of burnout on our health. But that's just the beginning. Lori shares practical tips to help us regain control, empowering us to advocate for ourselves when we're not getting the answers we need in our health journeys. And of course, Lori is going to help us learn how we can maintain a high level of energy and overcome some of those self-limiting beliefs that keep us on a burnout treadmill. Lori also reflects on how her journey as a mompreneur has changed her life and her family's dynamics. So let's dive in and get ready to be inspired by Lori Aikman, functional health practitioner, and she's also the host of the podcast, She's Healthy. So help me welcome Lori Aikman to the podcast. Hi, Lori. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for joining me today. We're going to have some really interesting stuff that we're going to talk about today, and I want to give you a little bit of an introduction, and so you're a nurse practitioner turned functional health practitioner, and I can't wait to dive into what that is, because I think it's really important to get that clear, and so you help high-achieving women and moms transform their physical, mental, and spiritual health, and I love that. I think as an entrepreneur, you're just kind of faced with the need. You can't hide your need to do that. So <laughs> I think it's so important to talk to talk about on the podcast. So thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm excited to be Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Before we dive into all the goodness we have to talk about, can you explain what is the difference between like Western medicine and what a functional health practitioner how are their philosophies different? Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. I actually did a little live on my Instagram this morning because this mm-hmm. question comes up a lot. I had a, yes. uh, was at an event yesterday and a fam- even a family member, you know, a distant relative, what is, what is functional medicine? So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I guess the, you know, the, and the analogy I used, um, was you have, say you're making pasta. You've got a pot of, you know, your boiling water, you got your pasta in and, you know, you got to like leave it. You've got that on the stove and it's boiling over, right? So that would be equivalent of symptoms popping up, right? Okay. The water is boiling over. It's like sizzling, you know, whatever kind of symptoms you're having in your body. A lot of times what, what we're doing with conventional medicine is, Oh, it's boiling over. Let's, let's just, uh, clean up, you know, let's, let's put the pot, uh, the lid on the pot, or let me wipe up around the stove or, you know, around the burner where it's boiled over, but we're not actually going, Oh gosh, the, the burner is the heat source that's causing it to boil and then boil over. And, and, and I come from, um, I feel like I have an advantage that I, I've worked in traditional medicine, conventional medicine for 11 years. Um, mm-hmm. 
And it's, it's not that conventional medicine is bad or doing things wrong. I mean, it's very necessary, right? We want mm -hmm. a, a hospital when we're in a car accident, mm -hmm. when we need surgery or things like that. But when it comes to more our preventative health, um, mm -hmm. you know, symptoms that are coming up that maybe you're going to your primary care doctor for, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of times we're getting treated uh, with just managing our symptoms. Oh, mm -hmm. you have mood swings. Mm -hmm. Let's try, maybe it's your hormones. Let's go on birth control. Maybe you need an antidepressant and an anxiety medication. Um, you know, but, but instead of looking at, okay, why is there a root cause? That is a very common, um, descriptor you'll hear for functional medicine is root cause medicine, because we are literally going Okay, a tree, if we look at a tree, we've got the leaves are our symptoms, you know, the branches are like the body sim, uh, systems that they're happening under, uh, but the root, you know, is really where the problem lies. Um, and I would say we're not actually taught in our training to look for root causes like this. We're, we're taught to look for disease. We're taught mm -hmm. to you have high blood pressure. Okay. Yeah. We maybe tell you to restrict your salt and lose some weight, but we're, then we're just putting you on blood pressure medicine. We're not, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's really, I could go on and on about this. Sorry. I'm giving right. you a very, no, I, I think, I think I find it fascinating, but, um, I, what's I'm curious about too is, so you were in this, the health industry from a Western medicine perspective, what kind of led you down the path of going, hmm, like something's not right. This isn't answering all of my questions, or maybe you saw patients recurring and like their problems were being solved by Western medicine. So yeah, yeah. I'd love to hear that. Exactly. That's, and that's exactly what happened is I, I was working in um, fa a family practice. I, I've done a little bit of everything. I've worked in the hospital and mm -hmm. worked in the OR and, you know, different places but I was working in more of regular doctor's office setting, family practice mm -hmm. setting. And I saw consistently, I would say a lot of them were younger moms, but I mean, mm -hmm. maybe like sometimes twenties, but a lot of times thirties and forties, you know, mm -hmm. not getting menopause yet or anything like that. And they were coming in and they, a lot of times they're like, I think my hormones are off. I need my hormones tested, but they're having mood issues that they hadn't had before anxiety, you know, high mood, low mood, anxiety, or more depressive. Uh, they were having problems with their cycles, you know, whether it was heavy periods, irregular periods, um, you know, fibrocystic breasts, really bad PMS, uh, trouble losing weight. I would say across the board, the top two symptoms that I hear are trouble losing weight. Um, and then energy, just like, mm -hmm. I just do not. And it's not that they're they would like get sleep, you know, it's not that they were just mm -hmm. necessarily up with kids in the middle of the night mm -hmm. or things like that. Like they couldn't sleep, you know, they were falling mm -hmm. asleep, but they didn't stay asleep. And mm -hmm. then they had no, or even if they did sleep through the night, like I just have no energy. And mm -hmm. I, you know, I did the things that I knew to do, which is like, okay, well, let's get some labs. Let's, let's see if it is your thyroid. And all the things that I knew to do through my conventional or Western medicine training didn't give us any answers. And so mm -hmm. I was the practitioner saying, everything looks normal, but I intuitively, and I hear this a lot from women. They, they tell me I've gone to my doctor. I've had all these, you know, the blood tests done mm -hmm. and they tell me I'm normal, but I don't feel normal, you know, and, and that intuitively I knew Mm -hmm. My patients weren't just crazy. They weren't just dramatic. Mm -hmm. They, they, uh, there was something, uh, you know, cause it was like, okay, this is happening again and again and again and again, there's gotta be a deeper answer here. And so that honestly, just the, the desire to help my patients is what led me to find functional medicine. And I just remember thinking like, why? why are we taught this? Why is this not just how we practice? And yeah. I, and I think, you know, if you look at research and things like that, I mean, I think we eventually will practice mm -hmm. functionally, uh, mm -hmm. 
but the there's always a lag unfortunately mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. the data says this but that actually getting translated into standard of care uh it takes a while right so. Yeah, it does. I think that there's been kind of an awakening for whatever reason, COVID or whatever, um, I think, or we're just realizing collectively, like, the medication isn't working or whatever. (laughs) Well, I would find a lot of my clients are intuitively, they know, Mm -hmm. like, I know there's something, you know, they're, Mm -hmm. they are aware of their body enough to go, something Mm -hmm. is off. Mm -hmm. And I, and, and they, then they're going to that, you know, and that's, mm-hmm. I could, again, I could go on and on and on and on. Yeah, but like, oh, I know. Even, even if you look at like autoimmunity, you know, so many mm-hmm. more women have autoimmunity. Um, and yeah, and, yep. and it can take go, I can't remember what the statistic is. It's like women go to an average of like seven doctors or something before they get mm-hmm. an actual diagnosis. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I had to be passing out before yeah. somebody was like whoa you have Hashimoto's <laughs> yeah <laughs> which <laughs> but so then hard. I I didn't even get the yeah, right medicine testing thyroid antibodies it's like well your TSH right. is normal even, right. though that, even though that doesn't show us the whole picture mm-hmm. right like nobody's looking at thyroid antibodies mm-hmm. because your insurance mm-hmm. that's a whole nother tangent I could yeah your insurance doesn't cover it. So we're not going to order the test. Why right. is and why are insurance companies dictating what doctors what are doing? Exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. And then it was a whole journey to get the correct medicine because levothyroxine is something that doesn't work for everybody. It's one of those medications that can be like taking water. Like that's how it is for me. So <laughs> It's wow. not working. Why? And there, for years, I don't know. I don't know. It should be. I you're figured it out. It's just normal. You should be good. Right. right. So, yeah, you definitely have to be your own ad- advocate. And anybody listening to this who has that whisper that you know something is off, I just encourage you to keep pursuing it. And I think you would totally back that up. Yes, 100%. Yeah. Keep be, yeah, be your own advocate. Mm-hmm. You've got it. You know, yeah, if you're, if you're being dismissed, if you're being, Mm -hmm. you know, there's no answers for you, keep pursuing until you find somebody that can help Mm -hmm. you. Yeah. So let's talk about when someone finds you. I know that you often use the word burnout, but to help people kind of go, okay, what I'm experiencing, I'm not alone in feeling. What they coming to you with yeah 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 well I said earlier so the two most common complaints that I hear are one is energy just not yeah. having energy you know and it kind of well you're a mom well you're getting older you know this mm-hmm. is normal is what a mm-hmm. lot of women feel, but but not having mm-hmm. the energy they used to is huge mm-hmm. uh not and like the, the weights, you know, not being able to lose weight, especially mm-hmm. I'm doing all the things I used to do, or mm-hmm. I'm still a lot of my clients tell me that they're like, I'm the healthiest person in my house. I take the supplements. I go to the gym. I hardly eat, you know, <laughs> anything bad. And I feel terrible. Right. That's what a lot of times I hear from mm-hmm. the women. They're doing mm-hmm. all, the, all the healthy things. But mm-hmm. they still, you know, insomnia can be a big one. That's something that mm-hmm. comes up with a lot of clients. I have had some clients that are struggling with fertility. Um, mm-hmm. You know, they, I got pregnant before, but now I can't get pregnant. What's happening? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Period really changing irregular periods, um, you know, where there's skipping cycles, really long cycles, things like mm-hmm. that. Um, yeah, the mood swings, sometimes it's digestive issues. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's, um, I've had a number of clients who are like, I've been to the gastro, they've done an endoscopy, they've done a colonoscopy, they've, I've mm-hmm. had all the tests and mm-hmm. they've just told me to take a probiotic and a stool softener, you know, um, even though they've, they've had the, had workup, it's been from a conventional perspective and we're not looking at these root cause things. Um, mm-hmm. that, and, and yeah. so that's 
there. Those are kind of a cluster of, of the symptoms that I hear a lot mm-hmm. of time. Yeah. So I know that there is definitely not a cookie cutter solution because we're all biologically different. We're all unique. But what are some of the things that we're doing in our lives that may be resulting in this happening? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, And it's, yeah, it's a big, that's a big question, (laughs) right? Right, Um, I know, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, so much, I was thinking about this actually, so I was with family yesterday Mm -hmm. um, and like some of my extended family and I thought about it, you know, we have like our, my parents' generation, so Mm -hmm. much my mom, my aunt and my uncle and and then us cousins were there and we're all like 30s, 40s. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was interesting that our parents are pretty healthy. Like my one aunt has Hashimoto's, my mm-hmm. mom has migraines, um, mm-hmm. but they're, like there's no, but then you look at our generation, um, I'm going through workout process right now, but I'm pretty sure I have some autoimmunity. My cousin does, Mm -hmm. my other cousin has, you know, digestive, you know, it's like what changed from people that are in their, you know, sixties, that's our parents versus us that are thirties and Mm forties. I personally, and, and a lot of the data backs this up is, is we are bombarded by toxins, you know, that are Mm -hmm. really impacting us. Um, Mm -hmm you know, the, the food that we eat, um, Mm -hmm. it's in plastic packaging. My husband was read something the other day. He's like, Oh, they found that are finding plastic particles in human hearts now on autopsies. It's like, I believe it. I believe it. Yeah. Isn't that, that's just incredible, incredible to think about, but yeah, all of our stuff is in plastic. Um, we, you know, our parents, probably ate a lot of like more whole foods um, mm-hmm. because these processed foods aren't around, weren't around. Mm-hmm. Whereas we grew up eating fruit loops and goldfish mm-hmm. and, you know, these packaged process, like this convenience, I think that we've had has really impacted us where oh, yeah. things have got to be the other things shelf stable. So you get a lot of seed oils, which are very inflammatory all these things, not to get into too many details, but then these, um, it just can get complicated and overwhelming. Sure. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. But that stuff impacts our hormones. Uh, Mm -hmm. it impacts our, um, cellular function, like how well Mm -hmm. our cells function is all this overload of, Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. everything, you know, our parents used to clean with, I don't even know, like vinegar and water, you know, Mm -hmm. very, Mm-hmm. natural things versus now we have one of different cleaners and fabuloso and kaboom and I'm just thinking of these random you know <laughs> everything Clorox everything and uh-huh. so yeah. so anyways I think environmental uh mm-hmm. impact environmental exposures mm-hmm. um which is uh, kind of hard to like you really have to be very proactive to mm-hmm. hey I'm gonna eat food that's, you know, not in plastic and not conventionally, mm-hmm. you know, it can be very overwhelming to consider things like that. But mm-hmm. then we have, um, yeah, the medications we've, you know, I think of how many rounds of antibiotics I've been in, on in my life, mm-hmm. uh, birth control pill. I can look back and see in my life where, when I went on birth control, uh, which those of you that I'm not saying and some people have to, you know, if you don't want to get pregnant yeah. and you're very cool and, I, I'm not at all saying you're wrong for taking birth control or anything like that, but, uh, we know that there are studies that show that birth control impacts, um, your, like the gut function, leaky gut. Um, I can see mm-hmm. where a ton of my symptoms popped up after I started birth control. Oh, wow. Uh, and I've seen that in my clients as well, where we trace it back. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, rounds and rounds of antibiotics that have killed off our good bacteria mm-hmm. uh, that have contributed to ne- leaky gut as well. Um, mm-hmm. But then if we look at, okay, a busy mom, then mm-hmm. doing all the things, not getting rest. You know, we have, if we think about, we have this onslaught from our environment 
of mm-hmm. all these toxic exposure, you know, like these things that are kind of hard to, to prevent maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, and also from a lifestyle perspective, we are taking on some, I think of a client of mine, she has three kids. She works, uh, she's a reservist, but she's like full-time active. So she basically, she has a full-time, full-time job. Her husband is an entrepreneur, owns his own business, very busy. They have three kids that are very active in sports. Uh, and she, you know, it was very hard for her to go, but I can't delegate. My mom handled everything herself. Why can't, but I look back and like our parents, like they didn't though, like our grandparents, I don't know. I just looking back at my family, they lived more in communities. You know, the uh, grandma was always in the house with, you know, my great grandma was in the house with my grandma helping to raise the kids. And, you know, Mm -hmm. we, I think that we are taking on a lot more stress in our lives Mm -hmm. uh, and not delegating out because we think that we should be able to do everything. Mm -hmm. Um, that is a, a huge contributor to a lot of the women that I work with, um, Mm -hmm. is there, there's like this constant chaos, um, maybe not chaos, but they're, they're, they're in survival mode all the time because they're doing all the things, um, I can Mm -hmm. do myself as well, you know, I'm like, let me be a mom, have little kids and start a business and, you know, Mm -hmm. have a husband that works odd shifts and, (laughs) Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. so we're, we're, yeah, we're surviving off of caffeine and not sleeping and, and, mm-hmm. and our bodies are bombarded by all these other things in our environment. And it it's mm-hmm. really, uh, kind of <laughs> setting us up for, but it's just making it very hard for us to like right. live and feel really good. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. And I don't think that we realize how much we take on. And especially as moms, they've done studies. We still, despite the progress in us working and and whatnot and changes in society, we still have an overwhelming burden of, you know, household duties and family duties that, you know, no matter how supportive your spouse is or whatnot, it's just, you know, like in my situation, my girls just prefer me to be there and I want to be there, you know? So, I mean, we just have this really tight bond and you just have to learn to deal with that. But so I really love how you have this. It's not just a functional medicine perspective. You also address with your clients the mental health and the spiritual side of things. And I find that so interesting. And honestly, I think it's necessary because if you're not tending to all of those things, then, you know, you're not going to have that, I don't want to say balance, because I don't think there is a balance, but you're you're still not going to be moving in the right direction consistently, I think. Um, so can you talk about like how you address, you know, how we're feeling with our nervous system and how we just kind of are in this, like you said, survival mode and we don't even realize it. So what are some of the red flags that we can look for because we're just tuned out? We don't even know we're in survival mode. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So if you think about and and I agree. I think people can, you're like, I'm just, you're trying to do all, you don't even realize, yeah. like I was even reflecting on my life um, this weekend and just thinking about, gosh, I used to be more fun than I <laughs> am. You know, I know that sounds bad. And, I, and I'm, my story is I am at, my daughter is almost 13 months. We're working on weaning um, mm-hmm. and I'm still recovering from having her and working on some of my gut health and hormone changes from, mm-hmm. from birthing her. Sure. Um, just because I chose, I know that there's certain things that I can't do when I was nursing mm-hmm. her. I chose mm-hmm. to, you know, to try and get to the year. Um, mm-hmm. But anyway, sorry, tangent. But, um, you know, I think that like that not having 
joy. And I, I just think of a client of mine. It, we had gone through this like six month full process together. And then she and her family went on this like huge road trip this summer. And mm-hmm. she was like, I was able to like enjoy. We were in a camper with all three of our kids and, and like ho- hotel one night and camper and da, da, da. And she's like, I was able to enjoy it. She was like, I would normally be like panicking and like trying to think where's it going to, you know, just, just think about if we think about physiologically being in survival mode. So if our body mm-hmm. is in the fight or flight response and our mm-hmm. body is triggered, okay. It, we do, we get like laser focus and think to your, yeah. your entrepreneurs, you mm-hmm. can't think creatively because mm-hmm. you're like, I just have to do the things and keep everything in line. You know, I think about that in yeah. myself of like, like not necessarily being able to enjoy life. Like I want to, or, and I have in the past because I've mm-hmm. been like, in physically survival mode, some, mm-hmm. and then stressors, mm-hmm. but um, things that can show up physically in your body. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I think from a heart perspective, you can have palpitations. Uh, mm-hmm. Some of my clients would um, feel dizzy when they got out of bed in the morning, mm-hmm. uh, Would is kind of a sign of really being depleted, um, mm-hmm. being having digestive issues. So when we're in mm-hmm. fight or flight, our, our, like think of physiologically, our body is, making it so we can fight or flee a situation and digestion goes to the wayside. So we may have Mm -hmm. issues with constipation or bloating or um, like our stomach acid can be impacted. So this could look like indigestion Um, Mm -hmm. might sound like TMI, but you're like having food in your poop, right? Your body is not literally not breaking down food. Mm -hmm. Um, You can be having issues with with your urination as well. Um, like Mm -hmm. cystitis, stuff like that, um, from a hormonal standpoint. So if your body's in fight or flight, like my women that are having a hard time getting pregnant, Mm -hmm. you're like, your body's saying, I'm not safe right now. Right. Mm -hmm. If you're in Mm -hmm. fight or flight. Um, Mm -hmm. so it's going to be hard for you to your body to go, okay, let me ovulate. Let me have a baby right now. Mm -hmm. When you're your body is going, the chemicals in your body, it might yeah. not, you know, I, it, that's the thing that sometimes I have to explain to women. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's not necessarily that you're like, I don't know, going through a divorce, you know, something that's very, very right. stressful. like you could just be a busy mom and you think, well, this is just my life, mm-hmm. but what's going on hormonally and like with mm-hmm. a neuro you know, neurotransmitters in your body is your mm-hmm. body is feeling like there's all these things safe. all the time. I'm not safe. Yeah. I can't have normal periods, right? What, mm-hmm. what happens a lot of times is, um, on a hormonal standpoint, progesterone is going to be really low. And especially if you are like 35 or up, well, our, our progesterone mm-hmm. start decreasing. Um, mm-hmm. so, but then you add, you know, being in fight or flight on top of that, Mm-hmm. heavy periods, um, mm-hmm. PMS trouble sleep. So progesterone as a precursor to something called GABA, which helps us sleep and feel calm. So trouble mm-hmm. sleeping at night, trouble falling asleep, trouble staying asleep. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some other things. If you're waking up in the middle of the night between like two and four every night, that can be a sign that you're, you're having problems, your liver detoxing, you know, um, uh, all kinds of, you know, just the toxins that we experience every day, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It, it, skin rashes, things like that, um, can come up, um, mm-hmm. it's your skin. I mean, there's, mm-hmm. they can, it can look so, uh, different, you know, and in each mm-hmm. person it shows up, mm-hmm. but those are signs. And I think the biggest takeaway is even if you're not going through a massively psychologically stressful situation, Mm -hmm. just the fact that you are maybe a working mom, that's, that can be stressful. It's enough. (laughs) The thing is, it's what your body perceives as stressful will trigger. Mm -hmm. So my, this is something I used to do when I was younger. Thankfully I've gotten better as I've gotten older, but Mm -hmm. the, the thought of the fear of, 
I offended somebody, somebody thought the right, you know, it just mm-hmm. would be the situations I was imagining in my head that mm-hmm. could happen mm-hmm. would stress me out. And so mm-hmm. these are things that aren't even happening. I can think of now me thinking mm-hmm. about as a mom, me stressing about what could potentially happen to my kids, mm-hmm. right? That's for your fighter, the fight or flight response in your body. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that there's so much more potential as a mom to kind of have that because <laughs> you're, that's your job. It's like what could happen? Right. I, what do we need to do to protect the kids? You know? Right. Yeah. And those height, those senses heighten once you have children. Like, I don't know. I remember like having my first daughter and we would be in a crowded situation or something, or she would be in a situation and I would just like, you know, it yeah. is, it is a visceral reaction um, that can be both physical and mental. It's um, so, yeah, we're very susceptible to all of those things. And I think that that's such an important message to say that you don't have to be going through this life changing situation just existing and and being trying to be the best parent possible and take care of your children can sometimes be enough and all of our bodies are different and what my body might perceive as a threat or can be totally different for somebody else um but i think what is probably consistent and tell me if you agree is that we do have this voice that tells us something is not right yeah And it's like, whether you choose to listen to that or not. Yeah. Is well, I think pushing through, like, Mm -hmm. you know, your body is telling you it needs more sleep, but Mm -hmm. you're, I'm totally guilty of this. You know, my body needs more sleep, (laughs) but I'm going to get up a little early and get my workout in or, or Uh it it can be healthy thing, you know, like pushing it Mm -hmm. too much or. I mean, I have had this deadline coming up, so I'm going to stay up late or I'm going to get up early, you know, and mm-hmm. forego sleep, which is working against my body. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. So I would love to talk about some of the things that we can do. I know, like you said, yes, it is very overwhelming to just say to somebody, okay, quit eating all fast food and everything in plastic and start shopping at Whole Foods and go on a whole food diet. And yeah. da, da, da. you know, I know, and especially I love to remind myself and other people that, you know, if it took you four decades or three decades to create a habit, be kind to yourself, it's not going to go away overnight. But I think that there are obviously places we can start and incremental changes that we can make. So do you have any suggestions for that on an environmental level? Mm-hmm. Um, like the like environments, like yeah, exposure. like food that we do, and oh, okay. you know, maybe maybe even like I honestly, I am a person that's very much triggered on how my physical environment is. Like yeah. I cannot stand like, uh, you know, like clutter and like the visual noise like I have to have things I just have realized like I my brain just goes yeah Mm -hmm. you have that I have to have simplicity yes I mean in in, there's so many of the I think of um Ali Kazaza that has Mm -hmm. Think of her book, but just I felt like I I had read m- multiple like minimalist type books. Mm-hmm. And I really hasn't read her. I can't even think what her book is from. But she that yeah. was her story is from a mom perspective, mm-hmm. just always feeling in chaos because there was yeah. toys and clothes and like yeah. always all mm-hmm. this stuff that she had to manage mm-hmm. that was like mm-hmm. mentally draining. Yes, because it was just a bunch of stuff in their house, and and to I'm that so point, big on that. There's yeah. like this silent to-do list mm-hmm. on all the things that you have. And I could do, I could do episodes on that, but yes, that's totally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yes. What, and, and think about what could, how could you, are there ways you can simplify your life? Mm-hmm. And, and oh, sometimes yeah. this for women can be, we want, we don't want to let go of control. I was talking, I can't mm-hmm. remember who I was talking to about this the other day, but mm-hmm. 
right? Delegating a task out to someone else and being okay with how they do it, even if it's different than you think it needs, you know, like silly example, delegating the meal out to your partner, even though your mm-hmm. partner may not fix the meal the way you want it to be done yeah. or you think it needs to be done. Like it, it's mm-hmm. one less thing you have to do, right? Sometimes right. it's like us um, letting go of control. And I know for me, mm-hmm. right, I, I have, my kids are in daycare preschool, but, mm-hmm. um, I work, I do so work a couple shifts as a nurse, as you know, in a, in a traditional setting. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and I have to, it's weird hours. So I have to rely on family members to help take mm-hmm. care of my kids. You know, like I, mm-hmm. my mom has to come over my early days to come over to get them ready for school. Cause my husband, Anyways, TMI, my husband works weird shifts, night shifts. Um, um, so that asking for help, right. Can be really hard of Mm -hmm. like, Mm -hmm. I know for me, I feel I've, I'm Um, afraid that I'm burdening people by asking mm -hmm. for help Mm -hmm. and I have to like go, she told me to call her anytime that I need help Mm -hmm. with my kids. Like this is my sister-in-law. So I'm like, okay, Mm -hmm. let me call and ask because she has said, please let me help you. So let me Mm -hmm. Be okay with that and be okay with mm-hmm. receiving help, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, um, that's huge. Some, yeah, <laughs> receiving, mm-hmm. right? Um, some other ones that are super simple that come to mind is like drinking enough water. Mm-hmm. Um, so that is a stressor on your body when you're walking. If you're drinking caffeine all day and no water and, and no electrolytes too, we do need some electrolytes. I mean, that is mm-hmm. stressful on our body. Mm-hmm. Uh, eating a eating in a way that stabilizes your blood sugar. I find that's a consistent theme with my clients, even yes. if they're healthy, even if they're working out mm-hmm. is because they've been in fight or flight and their cortisol has been all over the place. This has driven up their blood sugar. Mm-hmm. And so you got to look at, are you eating enough protein at each of your meals or are you eating enough healthy fats? Yeah you need to decrease the carbs a little bit or eat different carbs that are just have more fiber. Most of us don't eat enough fiber. Um, we need 30 grams of fiber is the recommendation just to prevent colon cancer. And I would say average Americans, I think it's like 10 or 12 grams of fiber a day, Mm. but fiber helps to balance blood sugar as well. Stabilize blood Mm -hmm. sugar. Mm -hmm. Um, and then yeah, like getting enough sleep, getting enough sleep. (laughs) <laughs> uh, getting in a little bit of movement doesn't mean you're mm-hmm. doing, you know, orange theory hits five days a week, but right. Get outside in nature and mm-hmm. take a walk. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. those are some very basic things that so many of us neglect um, because we want it to be complicated, right? It, it can't right. just be, we like, we eat a little more protein, a little more fiber. It's like, well, no, I have to do the complicated diet. Mm-hmm. That then I fail because then I'm doing all or nothing and then I give up and I don't, you know, like where we could just like build a little <laughs> small sustainable habit and then yes. build on there and build on from there. Yes, a hundred percent. It was, you know, I've been an entrepreneur for almost a decade and it was not until 2023 when I was putting my schedule together where my husband was like, can you schedule in your sleep and then back out from there and then plan everything else? And I was like, what? What? (laughs) (laughs) And then I started adding a protein shake to my mornings. Yeah. Just those two things alone before we even get to like the boundaries and everything else. Game changers. And, you know, I consistently prioritize movement, you know, during my week and during my day. And it's, those are game changers. They really are probably not going to cost you anything or more. You can replace it. Yeah. You don't need a gym membership. You don't need some fancy box meal that you have to have delivered. You you know, it's just simple things that you can make lifestyle changes. And so I love that because we just don't realize we're on this treadmill yeah, and we don't realize. So um, I would love, and, and 
you know, it just, if you just make a couple of those adjustments, your energy level is probably just going to, you know, yeah. be astronomically more. I can attest to that. Um, so what about mental health and spiritual wise? Where are some adjustments that we can make in those departments? Uh, yeah. You know, what I found, um, and, and, and honestly, like everything that I, I feel like I help my clients through is like things mm-hmm. that I go through myself. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. I don't at all say these things of like, I do things perfectly. Right. And the oh, whole no. time, you know, it's an ongoing um, journey on <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Like you can recognize things in other people because you've been through it yourself. Right. right? Uh huh. Yep. Um, I found not, not necessarily with every single client, but I have found with, I've spoke to it earlier about the receiving part. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I have found that there was this consistent theme across some of my clients this year of, they were like spinning their wheels and doing all the things, you know, and burning themselves out mm-hmm. and like it wouldn't matter if they were, they were going to continue to do that no matter what, you know, Mm -hmm. because it was really an inner problem. I think that came down to, I'm not valuable unless I'm, which this is totally has been my story. My value is in what I do. My value is in people needing me, right? A lot of we can have like some people pleasing tendencies or um or like I have to do everything perfect, right? Because it we are getting our sense of love, you know, love and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um our our you know, if we, I grew up <laughs> at a girl, you know, I grew up being an athlete. And and so it was like, the more I performed, the more I did well, then people liked that. But then I got to this place where, well, if I'm not doing all these things, do people still love me? Or is it just, they mm-hmm. love me? So we have to kind of get to that place where we love, like there has to be some self-love and self-acceptance mm-hmm. for us to yeah. get off that hamster wheel of mm-hmm. performing, performing and performing and burning ourselves out, which is then affecting mm-hmm. our physical health, right? It's mm-hmm. really yep. mindset. Um, you know, if you're religious, like, and you're applying, like, I know some people are, some people aren't, but that we've got to, if you're accepting God's love for yourself or your own love for yourself, you know, really getting mm-hmm. to that place of accepting you so that you're not mm-hmm. on this, the hamster wheel um, as we've said of burning mm-hmm. ourselves out and doing and doing and doing mm-hmm. and doing and doing and doing, and doing you know, mm-hmm. that so many, um, so many women, you know, because mm-hmm. we, I think a lot of times are socialized as caregivers, right. We're taking mm-hmm. care of, mm-hmm. well, and then biologically, you know, if we're mothers, mm-hmm. or, mm-hmm. yes, we are taking care, but, um, we have to love us and take care mm-hmm. of us. Yeah, I've seen that play out so much. And even in my own journey, too, you know, especially if we're high achievers, right? If we're just kind of been conditioned to, we got the gold star or we got, you know, some kind of reward that we're continually seeking externally, um, whether it's grades or the title or the promotion or the degree or whatnot, we can definitely find ourselves in that trap and we don't understand well, I'm doing all the things. Why is it not working? Why do I not feel worthy? Why do I, why am I having a hard time doing the things that I want to do? And it's something that I address with my clients because I've been through it myself. It's like, (laughs) you know, I've seen it. It just, um, wow. Yeah. It totally is, you know, something that we're just not attuned to. Mm -hmm. Um, So what are some of the ways that you work with clients to help kind of change those beliefs? Like what are a few techniques that strategies that we can take away from the conversation to begin to kind of identify and change that? Yeah. Yeah. So there's, um, there's something that I learned this year from, um, I would say a friend of mine, she's a, she's Mm -hmm. a, I was, 
tell her I'm like, you're such a badass. So uh, it's Dr. Stephanie Lopez. If anyone wants to go follow her, she she's here locally near me. Uh-huh. Um, but she was a, she was a performance. She's a psychologist by, Mm -hmm. you know, training. Um, Mm -hmm. but she was a performance coach at NASA and Mm -hmm. now she she coaches women, um, Mm -hmm. like by achieving women, Mm -hmm. but I went through this exercise with her, um, and one of her retreats where you have, and I'm integrating this with my clients is you have Mm -hmm. your like ideal self right mm-hmm. over here, put it down. Well, I should be able to handle a lot of things and not ask for help. I should, you mm-hmm. know, have a six figure, seven figure business, whatever, whatever those like things that you think you should, I should have, you know, a stick figure bot. I don't know, whatever it is, whatever mm-hmm. this ideal self that you have in your mind of who you should be. Mm-hmm. And then there's who you are, you mm-hmm. know, who, where, what you currently and then our self-esteem is a lot of times how close or far apart those are right Mm -hmm. I'm like I should be I should be this and this is what I am if it's really far apart we may our self-esteem may be lower we might have a little Mm -hmm. higher self-esteem than the closer we feel you know we're matching up to who we should be but anyways the thing is the thing we can insert in the middle or I guess Mm -hmm. over here is all acceptance Mm-hmm. What if we just accepted ourselves who we are? Mm-hmm. No matter what. You know, if we, you know, I don't know, we, our body doesn't look the way we think it should. Our business doesn't mm-hmm. look the way we think it should. Our, our parenting doesn't look the way we think it should. Our friend, you know, all these things that maybe we think we should be. What if it's okay for us to be? just that way. And we accept ourselves. And the thing she explains um, um, is that a lot of times people think, well, if I just accept myself who I am, then I'm not going to change. And I do, I can't just accept myself mm-hmm. as like a lazy, per- you know, or whatever you think is negative about you. Mm-hmm. But, but the truth is that we, when we accept ourselves, then we, we do, we do still change, you know, we still, mm-hmm. but it's, in a, it's kind of, I gave the example, we podcasted together recently, but if I, I don't know, do you, I'm like, I don't want to use cuss words. That's not okay with your audience. (laughs) If I, uh, if I bitch and complain to my husband about everything he doesn't do, Mm -hmm. all it does is drive him further away from me versus Mm -hmm. if I just, if I am, you know, like, Hey, thanks so much for cooking dinner, even though, you know, whatever I'm like, he didn't cook dinner right in my head. Like that makes him want to cook dinner more, you know, that, that Mm -hmm. draws him closer to me. If Mm -hmm. I'm accepting of who he is versus if I am fault finding and blaming him, that just drives him further away from me. So why would it be any different with ourselves? I'm like, fault finding and complaining and blaming and shaming myself Mm -hmm. all that does is go like god I'm just gonna you know that doesn't make us really get any better versus if we accept ourselves as who we are you know and it's real and it's like such an easy concept but we Mm -hmm. we resist it but Mm -hmm. uh, that just was it was so impactful for me Um, yeah and then the other thing that I find is um, really just from like a energy mindset type of perspective is breath work, mm-hmm. doing a very mm-hmm. active breath work. I'm not a breath work facilitator, but Dr. Stephanie Lopez is. I have another friend, um, Ashley Livingston. She's come into my community and led some breath work sessions. Uh, that breath work has just been very yeah. transformative for me personally. Mm-hmm. I can go... Like I'm anxious, I'm stressed, I'm worried, da, da, da. I do 10, 20 minutes of breath work and I'm like a whole new woman afterwards. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So those are two very uh, powerful tools that I have found work for me mm-hmm. and that I, you know, work with my clients on. And then things like, yeah, mm-hmm. delegate, like yeah, get yourself a freaking house cleaner, you know, like spend the money so right. that you can buy back your time and yeah. your be so stressed that you have to clean mm-hmm. the whole. Mm-hmm. 
I love that. No, those are really good takeaways. And like you said, I always say we're always just like a mindset shift away from a totally different life, you know, and you never know just hearing the right person say something in the right way is just going to create a light bulb and go, oh, okay, I don't have to be like this. I can be like this. I can accept myself. What? <laughs> yeah. And I can just choose. That's the crazy part. Right. You don't have to go through some big, complicated part. Like you can just choose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I love that. So um, I, I love to touch on too, because I know my audience loves to hear just like, how has becoming a coach and becoming an entrepreneur and going down this path, how has that changed your life? And, and how has it impacted motherhood? Because I definitely am on this mission to dispel the myth that you can't be a good entrepreneur and a good mother and, and all those things. <laughs> yes, yes. I well, my story is that my motherhood is really what propelled me in mm-hmm. entrepreneurship. You know, I had kind Mm -hmm. of dabbled a little bit before, Mm -hmm. uh, but honestly, specifically when I found, I have a son and a daughter, when I found Mm out I was having a girl, when I, they're Mm -hmm. not, I was like, I can't bring her into this world and raise her Mm -hmm. going, mommy never really gave it Mm -hmm. like chased after her dreams. Mommy, you know, like I couldn't. Tell her, yeah. yes, you can do anything, you know, or, mm-hmm. and then so I put everything on hold and I never mm-hmm. really, like, there just was something in me that like, I've got to, excuse me, figure my shit out and, you know, mm-hmm. take my baggage and like, mm-hmm. I, I want to be the best version of me that I can for her and, and for him too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I, I think it's just like thought that her being a girl, she's going to mm-hmm. embody of who I am than my husband and I want to I want to be a woman that I'm proud of you know for mm. her. that's um, a really interesting perspective I've never yeah because I have two girls and now that you say it that way I think that that's definitely a sense that maybe if you have that same gender child that it's you see it just a little bit differently yeah I don't well and I could see where um you know, both my grandmothers stayed at home, you know, and mm-hmm. didn't, mm-hmm. Uh, my mom stayed at home for a while, then did go back to school when I was in school, you know, and works, you know, it just was mm-hmm. this like, but there was just this, some generational things that I was like, mm-hmm. I don't want to this on to her. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, That's and who awesome. husband, or not, not my husband, my son could take on those things too, but. Oh um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I do believe in the people say, you know, how you do one thing is how you do everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I've really through this journey, I would say whether you're a mom or not entrepreneurship, right. Mm-hmm. will bring up all your, all your mindset issues, all <laughs> your, you know, entrepreneurship is definitely personal growth. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, yeah. uh, it's, it's definitely been a journey, but, mm-hmm. um, I, something I am really, and part of it has been just even, uh, a, a matter of scheduling, but I'm really working to be very present in the, mm-hmm. the hours I have set aside for my business mm-hmm. and, and dedicated mm-hmm. to my work there. And then when I'm not when I'm with my kids, I'm very present with that, you know, and I'm present mm-hmm. in each area of my life. I realized at a time I was like trying to work when the kids wanted my attention. And then I'm not really, mm-hmm. you know, like, like I'm putting in a little bit of effort to multiple areas versus, mm-hmm. uh, I have a coach that says do less better, you know, okay, what, what do mm-hmm. I need to do? What are the, what are the, key action tasks I need to do. Let me give my all to those in the time that I have, and then mm-hmm. be very, present, give my all to my kids in the mm-hmm. time that I have with them. That's something that I've been working on. Um, and then I'm trying to, even rem- I'm trying to remember what you're <laughs> the mom, being a mom and an entrepreneur at the same time. Um, but yeah, I do just think it's, it's been definitely 
a personal growth journey being mm-hmm. an entrepreneur and and mm-hmm. um even though it's hard, I'm I'm thankful for it because I don't want to um I, I think being an entrepreneur takes a lot of grit. People not everyone necessarily um is willing to do, but you you know it because it's hard because you're like mm-hmm. you know like I don't know. I think that there's, there's a lot of personal stuff that comes up along the journey that you have to work Mm -hmm. through. Um, Mm -hmm. But I think that makes you a better mom and and person and daughter, whatever, you know, roles you play and your leader, you know, Mm -hmm. things like that. No, I totally agree. I think you're right. Like not every, not everyone is up for the challenge, but uh, if you are, if you so choose it, it can be this totally life-changing experience that maybe you wouldn't have examined your life in the same way. Um, so yeah, I, all of that resonated with me. I'm going, mm-hmm, yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think I thought in the beginning, like, Oh, I'll just kind of like do some coaching and yeah, it'll be. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh there's that. And there's that. And there's that. Yeah. Oh, my, yeah. my thoughts about my unworthiness are coming up. Or... Uh, <laughs> all right. All that kind of stuff. Oh, uh, we could talk for so long. Yes. I know, but, um, you know, if you want anybody to walk away with a, a message from this conversation, what would that be? One thing is, is just the more you can be in tune with your body physically, mm-hmm. with your, you know, your, your spirit or your intuition, you know, whatever you want to mm-hmm. call it. Mm-hmm. I think that really, I know for me for a long time, um, I, I had a heart, like I, I turned those things off and I did, I think a lot of what I thought I should do. And mm-hmm. so it's totally time for me to, um, listen to my intuition again, mm-hmm. but that, that serves you in so many areas of your life, right? Mm-hmm. Not just your health, with your relationships, with your business, mm-hmm. whatever. Um, and then the other thing, just from a health perspective, you know, people have asked me like, what's the one thing you would tell people? Um, I think you, you really have to, uh, control stress and what we call like down regulating your nervous system, whether you're using mm-hmm. something like breath work or meditation or yoga or journaling, or, um, you know, there are all kinds of modalities to do it. But mm-hmm. in my opinion, if you're, if you're eating a healthy diet and you're taking all the supplements and all that, but your, your stress levels are up here, the stress in your mm-hmm. body is up here. It's going to be, it's really hard to be that truly healthy that you may want to be. Um, mm-hmm. So that is kind of a, a foundation that's got to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be complicated and it doesn't have to be um, all the things that we might think that keep us from taking that journey. Um, but no, I love that. And I've loved this conversation. And if anybody listening wants to connect with you, where can they connect with you? Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I'm probably most active, like on social media, on Instagram, I do have like Facebook. I've kind of dabbled in TikTok a little bit, but, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Instagram is probably the place I'm most active just for like hearing more about what I think I do have a podcast. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm rebranding actually this month. Um, so Mm -hmm. probably if you just search the, well, you could search Lori Aikman, but she's healthy. Um, so talking Mm -hmm. all things, you know, women's health, um, Mm -hmm. and then my website just says lauriaikman.com. And I do have a free resource to help you get more energy. If you just go to lauriaikman.com forward slash energy. Um, so there's some, yeah, goodies on there. Awesome. All right. I love it. Thank you, Lori, for sharing all of this. And, you know, I just think that this is something we can't talk about enough because so many of us are just trying to do all of the things and need an excuse to pause for a minute to go, okay, let's reevaluate this. Right, right. Let's take a second. So, you know, I love that. And thank you for um, giving us that opportunity to think about you know, how we're living life and, um, how we can maybe do things a little bit better. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And we're, yeah, we're all, there's no shame. No, it's all just learning and learning what works for you and how you can 
great things into your life, right? Mm-hmm. I love that. Thanks so thank much, Laura. So for having me. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much to Lori for being on the podcast. It was so invaluable to me to hear her inspiring insights into balancing motherhood and entrepreneurship. You can connect with Lori and find more resources related to today's episode in the show notes. So be sure to check that out. She has some really great resources. And as bompreneurs, we need to make sure we're taking care of ourselves so we can serve at our highest level in our businesses and for our families. So be sure to check that out. And if you would like more personalized guidance on your mompreneurial journey, you can reach me at mombusinesscoach.com. If you found this episode as valuable as I did, please take a moment to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Your feedback helps us continue to bring empowering stories from amazing mompreneurs just like Lori. Until next time, keep rocking your mompreneurial journey. You are good enough and you've got what it takes to achieve your dreams and create a life that works for you and your family. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. It means so much. I'm your host, Angela Micheli, and until next time, bye.